You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. Yes. So, overall, a but, solid show. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah, I am um, pleasantly surprised. Yes and no. I mean, this has been the first pay-per-view in a while I've actually been looking forward to. Mainly, I think I'm more. Dr- I was more drawn into the main event, whereas... Wait, you didn't like Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal the last two SmackDown pay-per-views? No. What about the Fatal 5-Way Extreme Rules match? Not yeah. really. No. You're, I know. Yeah. You're right. You're 100% right. Yeah, I mean, that's just yeah, that's just kind of my my feelings on it. Well, it's funny because neither of us are particularly interested in Brock Lesnar. It's true. But I, I think the idea of having Brock Lesnar face someone who seemingly is going to be able to compete with him is intriguing. Well, they built him up, yeah, so that he was almost on the same level. Yeah, so that that was the uh, that was the big thing. Yeah, exactly. So certainly helped, and a lot of the matches and the feuds going into this were pretty good. Yeah, so. I mean, a lot of it was, it might be the blow-off of some of the feuds. Hopefully, because, yeah. you know, some of them have been going on for a while. Yeah, no, others, definitely. Others really haven't really picked up steam. Yeah. Or what have you. It's true. So, uh all right, I guess we'll uh, we'll get started. Start then. with the pre-show. Yeah. So originally, during the day yesterday, mm-hmm. um, they had mentioned that Enzo and Cass was moved to the pre-show as well. What, was but it like tweeted out or something? I I don't know if it was people just posting about it, saying it was going to be, but that was originally what I had heard yesterday. It would be more fitting technically than having the cruiserweight title match. Yeah, but but anyway, we got Akira Tozawa taking on Neville. For his cruiserweight title. With Titus O'Neil. Yes. Can't forget the Titus brand. Yep. <laughs> um, so this was a decent enough match. Um, we kind of expected Neville to retain here. Well, yeah. It wasn't Tozawa's time. Well, that it was the first match of the feud. Yeah. It was on the pre-show. Right. All, all that stuff added up to an obvious mm-hmm. victory. Yeah. Even though Neville. the faces usually win on the pre-show, but... I don't think that really matters. I think it's more of... The pre-show keeps the status quo, and generally speaking, in that for that, it's the, the face is winning. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, um, yeah, Neville retained his title. Um, so I guess Akira was running toward Neville in the corner, mm-hmm. and Neville picked Akira up and, and dropped he, him on the top rope. He gingerly placed him on the top rope. Okay, yes, it was like the saddest looking thing and because it, he was trying to sell it as if yeah, he, it was. It was a little awkward, too, yeah. how Tozawa was just standing there, and Titus is yelling at him, come on, get up, get up. Yeah. And, and then Neville kicks the top rope, yeah, the which referee, might have actually hurt. The referee went over to check on Tozawa, kind of telling him to get off the top rope, too, yeah. I think. And, uh, yeah, Neville went behind the referee's back, kicked the top rope. It hit him in his great balls of fire. <laughs> Well, actually, now they were on fire. And then, <laughs> uh, and then Titus is yelling at the ref, "That's cheating! That's cheating!" Yeah. And then Neville hit him with what a spin kick, I guess. To yeah, the he hit him with like a back kick and hit him yeah. in the stomach, and that was it. That was it. So, uh, very underwhelming end to a underwhelming match. Yeah. Um, so somebody had an interesting theory, and I kind of liked it a little bit, um, which kind of goes back to Austin Aries. Since he is no longer with the company, uh-huh. he was, I guess, granted his release. I don't know exactly the full details, but apparently he was not happy. Yeah. Just being uh, stuck in the cruiserweight and then apparently he had a bad attitude. But Yes, that's what but, it was. Yeah. But um, have Titus kind of cost Neville the title or Neville blaming Titus for it mm-hmm. and Neville start going after Apollo Crews and kind of have him move between the cruiserweight division and regular matches on Raw, so he's not... To, to try to bridge the gap? Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I like but that would kind of be a slap in the face of Aries, too, because well, he left for that, you know. Yeah, but it wouldn't so much be... It'd be more like progress. Yeah, that's, he was yeah, probably, that's true. He was probably pushing it, and they were like, okay, we got to wait, because it's not the right time, right. because it's still fresh. And if they if they were to do something like that, it would be a little... They might have been rushing it because of Aries' yeah, situation. I guess so. So, but you know, that's a good idea. And yeah. I like what they're doing with Titus because he's 
like I said, bridging the gap. Right. Yeah, between both shows. So because yeah. I was, I was watching two hundred five live from last week. Oh and he my came God. out, <laughs> and I'm like, how the hell did Titus O'Neil get over as a face this quickly? Yeah. Yeah. With just. The stupid nonsense, because the Titus brand was initially... A heel fashion. Yeah, it was a, a, a heel thing. Yeah. So, and all of a sudden, he just starts feuding with Neville, and he's super over as yeah. a face. Yep. It's like the craziest thing. It's great. It's working, yeah. yeah. And But I don't it's have, just, it's nuts. Yeah. But I, I think we're going to get to the point where you've done all the feuds in well, the it, Cruiserweight division. Yeah. What do you have? Ten people, if that. Yeah, it's not. It's not a whole lot. I mean, I feel like last week, what did Lince Dorado face Neville? And yep. I think that was the first time he's been on two hundred five live, and who knows how long. That's probably been a while. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, that's. Uh, hopefully, they learn that they need to start combining them. Absolutely. It's just, just so you get more exposure for people and yeah. you actually get people well, interested. Yeah, I, I still think we need to do that video on. Our gripes with the cruiserweight division. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. With uh, just the well, it's not even necessarily the cruiserweight division. It's just it's the well, specialized wrestlers in general. Yeah. Uh, the same thing with the future May Young Classic, where they think they might make a women's show. Yeah. Well, that's just us guessing. Well, yeah, it's a lot of people assuming yeah. that that's what's gonna what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. But you know that completely trivializes everything. Oh it's yeah. Like, right. Oh, they can't handle wrestling with the regular people. Right. 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 And that's exactly. Yeah, and, and honestly, the cruiserweights aren't even the best example of it. The European guys yeah. are the best example. Right, they yeah. are the best wrestlers, or at least the one, the Tyler Bate and um, Pete, Pete Dunn are yeah. the, well, definitely look, by far the two. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. biggest standouts mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. the UK. But um, anyway, moving on. Yeah. To, so uh, to, to open pe- things, people actually care about. Yeah, to open the show, and well. Uh, I'll get into it in a second. It was Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins. Yes, the least important match on the card. All right, so usually they want to get the crowd into it and everything with the opening match. Mm -hmm. I think this was more or less, let's get this out of the way because nobody cares about it. See, I agree with that thinking. I don't think that's what they thought. No, but every, like I watched a bunch of previews and prediction videos and everybody that did a video could care Did not care about this match. Oh, I, I... uh, I'm not logged on to this computer. But somebody had posted Bray Wyatt's stats, uh-huh. and it was like 100 wins, like 400 losses, and like a handful of draws. He loses a lot. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, what, uh, what they were thinking is most likely everybody loves Bray Wyatt. They like doing the Firefly things. So let's have him come out first Yeah, and get the show rolling. Uh, so, oh, surprisingly, this was not that bad of a match. Well, I, I think this was obviously because Seth Rollins was the one that controlled the majority of the match. Yeah, but I, at the same time, Bray had a lot of like vicious heel tactics and such. There it is. 182 wins, 424 losses, and 10 draws. Yeah, that is not a good... Uh, no. That's not a good percentage. No. 68% losing. I wonder... I wonder what John Cena's is. I don't remember. I know Ro- Roman's was pretty high, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, but I'm uh, just... Because John Cena's um, been going so long. Yeah. So, um, anyway. So, but yeah, like I said, this was a pretty good match. Um, For what it was. Yeah, I'm For what it surprised. was, yeah. Um, so, one of the most standout portions of the match was when uh, Bray did the, the oh. upside-down thing. Yeah, oh, and, in the corner. Seth, yeah, and yeah. Seth kind of just didn't do anything. Yeah, it was like, kick him right in the head. Come on. <laughs> it's the same thing with Gallagher when he stands up there. Yeah. There's no reason to just sit and, yeah. and be afraid because he can flip upside down. Yeah, but... um, The beard is scary. Yeah. Uh, I think... Would Rollins have him... No, he was going... Ray was on the outside. He rolled to the outside. Mm-hmm. And Rollins went to grab him through the ropes. Yeah. And, and I guess he... the referee kind of was pulling Rollins o- away from the ropes. Yeah. Bray raked his eyes and then rolled back in the ring and hit his sister Abigail for the win. Yeah. The idea that the ref didn't know about the fact that he hit him in the eyes is ridiculous. Because liter- he literally went through the ref's arms to yeah. get oh, to yeah, yeah, his yeah. face. So... Eh. But, you know, referees are st- they're the zebra morons. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So I don't even remember what match was up. Oh, we had Enzo, was Enzo and Kiss. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of how I expected the match to go. Oh, absolutely. But was hoping it didn't. Yeah. I figured they would have given Enzo a little bit more offense. Yeah. Um. Well, the mat. Well, the match didn't start, but Enzo came out first. He, he dropped. Could've... He dropped a wicked promo. Yeah. Um, it was probably a good almost. It was long. It was almost ten minutes, maybe no, maybe five, five minutes. It was probably five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah, it and, felt like that. And it, it just shows felt. that he is absolutely one of the best talkers, and that they trust him. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and he's super over. I think it's funny because I think Cass turning heel was be the be- best thing for Enzo. Well, I think that. The whole reason they let him cut the promo is because he was going to get squashed, and they figured we might yeah. as well give this guy some sort of you get, uh, crowd appreciate. You yes. know, yeah, because they got the crowd into it because yeah. they were super behind him, and it gives Cass <laughs> lots of heat. So that means that he's going to be going in as a big heel for whatever yeah. he does next. It's true. So, and this is hopefully an example of this is a one and done kind of deal. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I really hope that Enzo stays as a regular. On TV, yeah, maybe I, not necessarily wrestling every week, but involved in things. Mm-hmm. Have him feud with like, well, first he should squash Kurt Hawkins. Oh, everybody squashes Kurt Hawkins. Um, Actually, they don't. Well, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but you just just get him, get him on TV. Have him have like, but the Big Show is not a good person to team him with. Because, no, but if they pick someone else to do what the Big Show did then they could have him ride with them. Right, right, right. So it's not even necessarily like he's going to be a tag team, but being associated with someone would mm-hmm. be better. Right, yeah. So that they're together very much in the way that... Um, actually, there's not a whole lot of that. Not, where there's no. two male superstars who aren't a tag team, but they but just still... just together. Yeah. Not too much. Yeah. It's only on special occasions. Yeah. Um. Anyway... The yeah, like you said, this match was a huge squash. Cass just laid yeah. laid him out oh, yeah. the whole and time. Cass has new attire and new theme music, which is I'm not sure that's new attire. I maybe not. Yeah, I don't think it is. He just doesn't have his how you doing. Yeah. I think he on. changed to his to wrist tape his, to white instead oh, of black. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah, he came out with a new entrance music, and it was basically like the. Generic creator wrestler entrance yeah. music for any of the uh, video games. It was terrible. Not very good. It, he he would have been better off actually keeping the Enzo and Cass music. Yeah. Just because it's better than generic crap. Well, that's true. Yeah. But they have to build upon it. Well, yeah, I know their idea is that they want to separate the two of them. Right. But I think at this point, if they didn't have something good, they would have been better off sticking with the old. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, anyway, this this match didn't really lead to anything. No, it was cast Cash. one with a big boot. Yep, and then Beat him he up got outside. Yep, thrown back in, hit the big boot, and that was the end of it. Yeah, and he got tons of heat, and you know they established exactly this is this is probably the most by numbers WWE feud there's been in a while, where it's there's a clear baby face, there's a clear heel, and the baby face the crowd's completely behind. Right, but I mean, it's not like they made it out of nowhere. This is yeah. they they turned somebody. It's not like uh, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, I guess uh, you're well, right. I, I'm talking about the culmination. Oh, okay. Not necessarily the entire mm-hmm. feud itself, but this this one match was a hundred percent okay. The crowd's behind the face, one hundred percent. Yeah, the crowd's behind. Uh, not or against the heel, one hundred percent. They did everything the heel is doing. It's just no, that's relentless true. and stuff like that. Yeah. It was just great. So, I, I, like I said, as long as this isn't the end of Enzo as a wrestler in terms of, like, a regular basis kind of thing, yeah. I still want to see him on Raw every week. No, yeah. That, or at least every other I'm week. I'm fine with that. So, and if you take him away from Cass and have Cass do big things in the main or in the top top of the card, yeah, that's fine because yeah, Cass right. is good. I think, I think he had trouble... Against Enzo because his promo skills kind of dropped a little bit. Yeah. Well, just j- besides that one initial oh, yeah. turn, right? That main event the first raw. Night, yeah. Um, like the week after, it wasn't great. I think last week he was very. Oh, that was the backstage one. It felt very scripted. Yeah. And so forced more th- more than natural. But I, Big Cass is obviously capable of doing good things, and Enzo is great on the mic. So you got to have him at least do something. Yeah. So. 
Anyway, after that was the uh, the tag team yeah. Iron Man match. Yeah. Ow. So going into this, we both thought the Hardys were going to win. Well, first we initially heard that Sheamus was going to be out for the summer mm-hmm. for the filming the movie. movie. Yes, and once this feud ends, there's no face tag teams besides Heath Slater and Rhino. It's true. I mean, the club, I guess, are technically considered face. It, Why? Well, they went up against the Revival the other night, and they were getting the, the not the other night, two weeks ago on main event. Yeah. They were getting the face treatment. Well, I guess that's true. But it's still not a good fit. Well, actually, it's funny that you brought that up. Um, I was listening to the Dave Meltzer mm-hmm. talking about a potential Roman Reigns heel turn. Yeah. And how um, at the top of the card, obviously the tag teams aren't at the top of the right, card. Right, right, right. But like he he knows that the WWE has no problem having heel versus heel dynamics. Yeah. So that could very easily translate into a good feud between heel tag teams. That's true. Because if the revival, not the revival, if um, Gallows and Anderson. Yes, if they're treated properly, they could put on a great feud with uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Yeah, but time and time again. I know, but that's that's what I mean, though. If they're yeah. treated properly, right, right. Granted, in the past they haven't been. That's true. I guess but, you keep them off TV for a couple of weeks, people mm-hmm. forget. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So if they're treated like the true threats that they should be, mm-hmm. and that could be a great feud because Sheamus and Cesaro are great to be in with. Yeah. So and they just need someone to work off of. Cesaro must be very stiff. Was it him that caused the? Uh, I think he is the one yeah. who busted open Matt. Matt got nine stitches. Yeah, he got uh he got tuned up pretty good. Yeah. Apparently, Sheamus got hurt too. Did he? Yeah, there was uh they posted something on WWE.com shortly after the match. I think it said a half hour after the match he needed medical treatment. Oh. They were taping up something. Hmm. Uh, they weren't very specific. No. So that was actually kind of what I was thinking might be leading to him them having to drop the titles. Oh, okay. Sheamus got hurt right during the match for some yeah. reason because it looked like he was really in pain, hmm. but they were very vague about what was going on. Yeah. Um. Overall, I thought this was it was good. This was a great match. I thought I, I, it was it was the best Iron Man match I've seen in a while. Um, I, I think that's kind of an unfair statement because just the fact that it was tag teams instead of single wrestlers, so there was multiple combinations. It's true. So I mean, it kind of adds to the element of the match. See, for the most part, in recent time. Iron Man matches have resulted in very low number. Yeah. What was this? Ended. Four three? It was four three. Yeah. Um so a one two Iron Man match is not as interesting as a, like yeah. a higher Well no the, they... the way this match started was fantastic. Yeah. Seamus hit a bro kick as soon as he got in the ring and Yeah. Well what happened was it was Matt and Seamus to start. Cesaro runs into the ring and then slides right out, confusing the crap out of Matt. Mm. Sheamus hits him with a bro kick. And that was it. Yep. Then he gets the first pin within seconds. Yeah. It was it was great. Um, The second fall? Oh, no, it wasn't a fall. It was a count out, right? Is that when no, Matt? No. The that third was not, one that was, was the, the third. Out. Okay. The second one was Cesaro pin Matt. I don't remember what. Oh, no. It was... Um, they did the Irish curse backbreaker right. off of the top, the top rope. rope. Yes, that was yeah, the yeah. second fall. And then the Hardys got one, right? Yeah, they got one off of, I believe, a twist of fate. Most yeah. likely, yeah. I think that's what it was. And then Sheamus and Cesaro got the third one. Yeah, that was the count out. Oh, yeah, yeah, off Matt. the count out. And then they got number uh, Sheamus and not Sheamus Matt, oh, Matt and Jeff got the third uh, their second one mm-hmm. off of uh, Swanton. I don't remember. Don't remember. Yeah, either way, um, it was 3-3 at the very, towards, like, with, like, a minute left. Um, Jeff hit a swanton on Sheamus, and then Cesaro, who was the legal man at the time, because I guess there was a blind tag. There was a quick tag, yeah. Yeah. So, Jeff doesn't know that Cesaro, I mean, yeah, Cesaro's the legal man. He he, uh, pins Jeff. Jeff's like squirming, and his his shoulders clearly come oh, off yeah. of the mat while the, he's. The third fall was the super twist of fade off the top. Oh, okay, that's, yeah, that's right. Was. Okay, yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it did not look good. Yeah, Sheamus took a big. That uh, might have been where if he got probably because yeah. it looked like he got tuned up pretty yeah. good because of the way he landed. Um, but uh, but yeah, Jeff was like he clearly kicked out because yeah. he was flopping all over the place. It was, it was just a, good... a bizarre. Uh, 
spot. Yeah, but obviously Cesaro was meant yeah. to pin him. That's why he. Well, that's why they did it. And then there was that one spot before it where he had gotten the pin, uh, Matt or Jeff, and Cesaro I think pulled him out of the ring. Right. Oh, he was and going. It, for I it. think he hit the third. His actual hand hit the third. The, oh, uh, of course. Third but that ball. happens all the time. Yeah. Where like you, where they hit the three, but they like, oh no, it yeah. doesn't count. Because the fans were not happy. Oh yeah, I, I remember the <laughs> fan reaction for that. Yeah. Um. So f this ref, I think was what it was, or something. Oh, like that's that. what that chant was. Uh, I think okay. It was, yeah. So, um. Or, but yeah, the Jeff or this like, ref sucks something like yeah, that. Visually, he kicked out, but they still counted as a pinfall. Yeah. So at that point, it's four three. And then at this point, Cesaro starts running away from Jeff. Yeah. No. I, yeah, yeah. 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 Then then Cesaro runs back into the ring. Jeff catches him, hits him with the twist of fate with three seconds left. Yeah. So goes he goes to... for the pin with the two seconds, yeah. and that was it. That was it. So, I uh, th- like I said, I thought this was a great match. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The only thing is, I don't know where they go from here. Uh, it's true, but I think that either a they do something with the Hardys separately for this right. a- a- after. Last night, because they they did a lot of establishing that this is the end of their yeah yeah because they were so evenly matched and the mm. last time that they were bested blah 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 yeah. so it made it seem like this is the end of it yeah so but. either Sheamus uh, they're gonna play up Sheamus getting hurt or he actually was hurt and they're just gonna let him heal for a little bit yeah or it could have been a way to write him off TV yeah that's that's yeah. what I was thinking yeah, the yeah, other yeah. possibility was so but. I guess, unless they don't, yeah, yeah, I don't, no, no, no. Who knows if they're getting, thinking about splitting the Hardys up. Well, that's, that's, that was my thinking. Then I don't know what the hell they're going to do, as far as tag teams go. I, like I said, it, it's a very good chance that the Revival will go up against them and they'll just do a heel heel. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Because obviously it's not going to be the Golden Truth, because they're not <laughs> together anymore. <laughs> All uh, right. Yeah, up next we had the uh, women's title match. All right, call, call me bold. But this is the best women's match we've seen in a while on uh, on the main roster. Well, yeah, well, fair enough. But I, I think this was Alexa Bliss's best showing. Yes, And I absolutely. think that's where it... Her and Sasha seemed to work pretty well together. Mm-hmm. The selling was good. Because mm-hmm. um, Alexa focused on her back after when she dropped her outside the ring. Or, or right on the apron. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this was this was actually a pretty good match. Certainly much better yeah. than any of the matches and that Bailey had with Alexa. Bliss, since she is double jointed, moved her arm oh, out, yeah, and then with... the stupid announcers were like, "Oh, I can't believe she's or whatever." It's like she did this stuff on SmackDown. Yes, but you, you got to remember that their <sighs> idea, their hope is that people forget these things. Yeah, that's true. Because I know that I like I remember the when that happened because right. that was cool. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, there, she's doing it again. So mm. it's good, you know what I mean? It, you're not supposed to remember everything. No, no, I know, but so I I had no problem with that. Um, and then what? Alexa kind of just gave up. At yeah, the end she of the got match. herself counted out. Yeah, so she left. She left, and then. Sasha went after her. She nailed her with a forearm or whatever. So Sasha was down, and then she got to the 10 count. Yeah. So, um, and at that point, Alexa's walking away with her title. Mm. And then Sasha goes, nah, not happening. Yep. Chase her up the entrance ramp, and then they get into a scuffle, and Alexa Bliss puts her on the table. And I guess, I don't know what she, she was going, going to, to go for the DDT. That's it. Because Michael Cole said, no, don't hit the DDT on the announce table or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, she ends up throwing Alexa, uh, Sasha ends up throwing Alexa off. And then she hits her with the double knees, which was really just Sasha's oh, jumping. That, that did on. not look pretty though. Well, for Sasha, it was fine. Oh yeah. Alexa, but Alexa got, she yeah. took a really bad bump onto the ground. Into the face. Because Sasha literally just landed on her. Yeah. It wasn't even like she does like no. the normal All her body weight was just pushing yep. right down on yep. Alexa. So and uh, her mouth was bloody. Yes. Yeah. Oh four matches, I think it was with blood. Or uh, three, at least three. Well, Braun got bad. Matt was bad. Yeah. Alexa was bleeding and someone else was bleeding too. Um uh, Dean, was Dean? Dean. Dean's mouth was. He, uh, oh, yep. okay. I missed that part then. Yeah, because so, I was making a joke. I figured he ate like a thing of orange Tic Tacs before the match or something like that. <laughs> it was weird because it was like just stage. Like every time you saw his teeth, you could see it, but that oh, was okay. it. So it was like the very yeah. minimal. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
But yeah, like I said, this was a really good match. Obviously not the end of their mm-hmm. feud. It, I think. There was no reason for it to be. Yeah. So, no point at all. It's also the newest feud on yeah. the card. Yeah, since she won that match, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, so it was not long. Yeah. Um, so Sasha Banks, obviously a great, great, great worker. Uh, Alexa really uh, stepped up her game. Yeah. And she did her normal heel stuff. So, I, I like I said, I thought this was a very, very good match yeah. for certainly the best one we've seen in a while. Yeah. Um, Women's match, of course. Yeah. It was a grade at a B minus. Sure. Uh, I'm looking at CBS's review of... Weird. It's amazing how many places do reviews of wrestling now. Yeah, and it's like mainstream stuff. I guess. Um, A- minus for the tag yeah. match. So up next, we had the Intercontinental Championship match mm-hmm. with The Miz defending against Dean Ambrose. He was accompanied by Maurice and The Miz Taraj. Yes. Oh, so... my God. Bo Dallas. <laughs> it's funny because... The half a man gang. The best part... Is that the, the him and him and uh, Curtis Axel come out, and I think they're directed to look like they're hot shots. I think that's it's, the direction it's they're given. Opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, but it's just because the way they were acting. Yeah, it's like look like you feel like you're better than everybody <laughs> else, and that's that's what they did, and it yeah. was great because it it was terrible, but it was funny. Yeah. So this, I I like I like this. This, this is, is a pretty standard match for the Miz using everybody outside the ring to his advantage. Yeah. Uh, well, the the match opened with <laughs> the Miz talks to the three of them, and then they end up walking to different corners of the ring. Mm-hmm. So Dean's like, "Okay, I know what's happening." So yeah, he then goes, he goes up out and, and attacks uh, Axel first. I think he attacked yeah. Axel first, and then he went in, beat up Miz a little bit. Then he went out, beat up <laughs> Dallas. So. Um, yeah, the numbers game just kind of caught up with Dean. Yeah, I honestly expected Heath Slater and Reiner to come out. I, I had a uh, feeling that it would have happened as well, I, but it did not. Because at first I'm like, okay, he's going to come out with them. And then that didn't happen. And then they were surrounding him in the ring. So yeah. I'm like, come on, they got to come out. Yeah, I guess so. But Heath Slater played a much bigger part in the show later on. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. This is, I'm guessing, the end of the feud. I don't know what else they can do with this. I hope so, and I hope Dean does something meaningful. Yeah. Which is kind of hard to assume that is going to be the case. It's, it's, it's not, you're not burying Dean, but you're just kind of making him not important. Yes, that's what you're doing, yeah. unfortunately. So you gotta, you gotta put Dean in, uh, in a feud with someone who's good, but, like, not obviously main event. He's like, he's not gonna go with Joe. No. Because that that feud doesn't make any sense, um, but you got you just got to give him something good where he can work off and do his like, I hate to say it, but his comedy stuff. Oh my god! So because it's <laughs> it's so entertaining. Yeah, you know it sucks for oh, him it's because that's watching, his thing. Watching him wrestle too. Yeah, just, it's just so entertaining. Yeah. But oh, <laughs> and then we went for the uh, what the hell's the where he dips through the ropes. And oh, the gr- lunatic, lunatic lariat. lariat! Thank you. And they <laughs> just pulled him out of the ring. That was perfect. Um, it's like it finally happened. Somebody took him down after well, that yeah. damn thing. So, but yeah, like I said, I I hope that the Miz sticks with the Miz Taraj because that's good. Mm-hmm. Like obviously, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel aren't threatening. I I read somewhere somebody had said that they should put Cass with them if if he's floundering. Um. Yeah, it'd be a good just crush. Just as a big man. Yeah. yeah, he'll just be. But if you do that, get rid of Bo Dallas. Yeah, and right. Curtis right. Yeah. Just have it the Miz and Big Cass. Yeah. Because he'll be the the Diesel to Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Somebody back. made that joke too. They well, like, it's it, perfect because like, it's the Hollywood guy out, again with the big yeah, guy dressed up in uh, SummerSlam like this. That's fine. It w- it'd, it'd be I'd funny. Be fine with that. Yeah. Just call him Diesel. <laughs> just start <laughs> just, calling him Diesel. <laughs> Kevin Nash might not might not sure. appreciate that. Kevin has thirty two surgeries. That's yeah. apparently how many he's had. Yeah. Well, the knee, his, the man's legs are made out of Jello. That's so true. not like Sid's though. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But also, Kevin Nash went at it a little longer than Sid did. Uh, yeah, you're, you're I, right. a lot longer yeah, than Sid true. did. <laughs> he was in TNA not too long ago in WWE. Yeah. Well, he wrestled in yeah. 2012. Yeah. I think it was 2012. Yeah. It All wasn't right. a good match, but he wrestled. Moving on, we had the ambulance match. Yes, pitted Roman Reigns against Braun Strowman. Yes, the 
what could be the culmination of their feud. Yeah. It's absolutely possible the way it ended. So, well, I I don't want to say this because I don't like saying it, but the last two matches that Roman has had between him and Joe and him and Braun, they were very good. So you're coming over to my side? No. Oh, but okay. I'm just saying. I like Roman still. That I, I'm getting more on board mm -hmm. with what they're doing. Yeah. The way they ended this match was perfect. A lot and of people are. I called it too. What? The, how it was going to end. How it ended? Yes. What him tr jumping into the yes. ambulance? That was really fun. Yeah. So um, Reigns went to spear Strowman. Strowman moved out of the way and he went right into the ambulance and Strowman flew shut the door. into, the, into yeah. the ambulance. Yeah. I was like, oh man, that would be the best ending. And then it happened. <laughs> excited um but yeah the the match started obviously in the ring there was a lot of uh physical uh stuff brawn oh yeah down on roman and then roman got a chair and yep. started hitting Strowman. he was just no selling it mm -hmm. was this after when he hit him in the arm right in the corner in the turnbuckle i think so i yeah. think that's what inspired the chair right. shots yes okay so um and then the match eventually led out to the ambulance roman gets thrown into the ambulance again like mm -hmm. he did on yeah. Raw last off week. the stage into the side yeah, yeah. Um, and then he hits him. He hits Braun with a couple of Superman punches by the by the uh, ambulance. Yeah, by the ambulance, and he's trying to push him in, but unsuccessful. And then he tries to spear him into it, but then yeah. he jumps into the ambulance. Yeah, and yeah. then a uh, couple seconds later, Ro Roman comes out. He spears him out of yeah, the ambulance. Yes. That was pretty cool. And then um, they. They fight a little bit, right? He's hitting him with the doors and stuff, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, and okay. then he threw him back in, closed the doors, went, jumped in the driver's seat, drove into the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point is when it kind of got weird. Um, Yeah, I'm very surprised they did it the way they did. Not not even the way they did it, just how they went about with throwing a match in there and everything like that. Oh, that was like weird. That. I don't understand why they did that. I guess it was just so the audience in there, if they didn't but care about it. But they were watching it. The I know. It's stupid. Because um, normally they don't do stuff like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, the uh, Reigns drives into the back. He, was, he looked like he was flying. He was. <laughs> I guess they made sure to clear the path. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what he, he does, he like turns and then he backs the ambulance into a trailer. Yeah. And he like crushes the thing while Braun Strowman's still, still in, the in the back. back. Yeah. Normally they do camera tricks. No, they think they did. I don't... King Ross talked about it. It's kind of hard to, like, assume that, though, because he was in the crushed ambulance. Yeah, I, they, they, I know they could have... He could have gone in through the front because there's a door, but at the same time, yeah. there's also plenty of room in the ambulance yeah. where he wouldn't have been affected True, by it if he stood but... in the right spot. He was probably in the driver's seat with rain. <laughs> that's probably where he was. That, I mean, that's pretty ballsy if they actually had him in there. Well, someone drove it. Yeah. So that's true. So if they he was all cut up, I'm guessing that happened from the match. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think they probably had someone else in there yeah. to, to get that set up or whatever. But it was really good. They did a good job. Basically, the, the only problem I had with it was the random people in the back taking pictures and video. That was just. Awkward. <laughs> I thought only Lurkin was back there at one point. <laughs> There's just like a few random women, then some producers, all right, or whatever. So, is this just Reigns being Reigns, or is this a, a heel? Lot, a turn? lot of people is are speculating this is a potential heel turn. I mean, I think that this is Reigns being the guy. Not, no, not this is Reigns guy. being frustrated and trying to finally put down Braun Strowman. Yeah. See, the problem with the feud that they built here is that. They're they're having the guy who can take down anybody mm -hmm. face a guy who's not supposed to be being able to get take down. So there's they've gotten to the point where like okay, there's literally nothing else we can do. We have right. to do something extreme. Yeah. So I I think a lot of people expect this to be a heel turn, but at the same time he'll probably come out tonight and he'll say I did what I had to do. Right. Yeah. And that's it. <clears throat> so that's fine. Um. So at at this point. 
I guess Jamie Noble came up with a crowbar and was trying to open the door. So yeah. then we pan back to the ring, and all of a sudden, Kurt Hawkins is on his way out. Yeah, and he looks very confused. Yes, and then Heath Slater came out, his opponent, and he looked confused as well. Yeah, he's like still wrapping up his arms, so apparently they were told to go out to the yeah. ring at the last minute. So we got about, what did you say, two minutes of action maybe? Uh, I think it said that the match was two minutes and 30 seconds right. long. Well, there you go. And then all of a sudden you hear fire engines. Yeah, during and, the match. Yes, and everybody in the the audience gets up and starts looking toward the Titan Tron or whatever you want to call it. And yeah. then all of a sudden the footage just pans to the back. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you, you can't the bell see ring. the match anymore. You hear the bell ring, and then Heath Slater won. Yes. So on Twitter earlier, Kurt Hawkins had posted up that he had gotten beat with a Canadian destroyer off the top rope. <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. That's his, great. His, oh, his, his Twitter, Twitter is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> For a guy that loses all the time, he definitely does it gracefully. Well, he's, he's entertaining. Yeah. You know, that's the big thing. Yeah, that's true. It's 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 how Zack Ryder got over when yeah. he first uh when he was first getting a becoming a name. Professional he, loser. He did well no, it was him doing the uh Long Island Ice Z. Yeah. Well the YouTube the videos. YouTube thing yeah, that he yeah. did before YouTube was really a big thing. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, you know, you just got to make a name for yourself for doing stuff like that. So anyway, we go back and there's all, uh, paramedics and firefighters, I guess. Yeah. Um, back there and they got the joys of life and we're trying to open the, the, uh, ambulance. I've never seen someone open a car with the joys of life before, but I feel like they haven't either. I, it it was like, it took way too long to do. Yeah. Well, I guess it was. Yeah, I guess I it really was meant don't have... to kill time or something. Possibly, but I don't know. Well, I guess it's weird on an ambulance. It's not like a car where you can just go through the top or. But um, yeah. So anyway, they cut it open, open the door, and trying to put uh, Braun on a stretcher. Yeah, he's like, he's no, leave hide. me alone. Yeah. So he's comes crawling out. And he's standing up, and then he's wobbling yeah, and he falling was, on the ground. He was all Basically kinds of bloody. Looked drunk. Yeah, a little bit. He and then hobbling. he started going, like, he just started walking away. Mm-hmm. And that that was it. Mm-hmm. So this is when I thought, oh, wow, he might interfere in the main event. Oh, no. no I, probably, I, I didn't think I that. Mean, but, I don't know, it was just weird the way they left it off, I yeah. feel like. So. Oh, that's how you spell coquina. Sure. I was spelling it completely different. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, I knew it, what you meant. You yeah, knew what it makes meant. no difference. But um, so yeah, that brings us to the main event of Brock Lesnar defending his Universal Championship against Samoa Joe. Yes. Um, like I said before, we were recording. WWE had gotten me invested into this match. And yeah, it's not very common. <laughs> no, not into anything Brock Lesnar in the last three years. Something like that. Nah, it's probably been two. Because since since that match that he had with John Cena. Yeah. Yeah, probably. It was the last intriguing thing that he did because there was that before that there was no chance of him winning. Yeah. Right. Or losing, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, no, they 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 did a good job with that and yeah. um despite the goofiness of the interview thing that they did last week on Raw, everything that had gone on previously was pretty good. Yeah. So um, but yeah, this match starts with uh, Samoa Joe coming out first, yeah. and then Lesnar came out there after a little bit of like there was a little pause there. Yeah, well, they was they were supposedly psyching out Joe or whatever. Sure. Um, so uh, JoJo announces Samoa Joe, and then Heyman takes the mic and starts introducing him as the the Samoan beating. Yeah. Um, Reigning, defending, uh, a universal champion, and then Joe attacks him from during, behind. Yeah, during yeah. his speech, so Joe completely blindsides Lesnar. He mm-hmm. beats the crap out of him. Yeah, hits him with him. a urinagi through a table. During, yeah, through the announce. Like yeah, it Germans? wasn't announced. Yeah, it was one of the German or yeah, yeah. Whatever. Well, it doesn't matter what announced table. Yeah. Um. So he does that, gets him back into the ring, and then the match officially starts. Yeah. And then very quickly hits him with the coquina clutch. Yeah. And then Lesnar's all purple. That's and, when Suplex City starts. Well, it's funny because I think Corey Graves said that 
It's like once once Lesnar's face turns purple, you know he's in trouble. Which is funny because what you need to do to get Lesnar's face to turn purple is him have him walk ten steps. <laughs> so it, it's really funny how like they make a big deal about the man yeah. who lives purple turn is turning purple. Mm-hmm. But I, I understand why they did it. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, and at this point the referee got distracted, I guess, and Joe hit him with a low blow. Oh, that was great. Yeah, that was a really good spot. They were up against the ropes. Oh, yeah. He kind of, like, grabbed the referee's arm. Yeah, like, he did. Arm, He's like, like come here, buddy. Yeah. He grabs the referee with Lesnar uh, holding him, going for uh, the German. Yeah. And then he kicks him. He kick, hits a low blow. Right, because he grabbed the ropes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, Heyman screaming on the outside, that was a low blow. That yep. was a low blow. That was really good heel work from Joe. He was very vicious, and he, he knew what he had to do to get the job done. Yep. Well, that's Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, but that's, that's not WWE Joe. True. That that's that's like I guess a TNA Joe. Yeah. Because we never saw that in NXT. No. Yeah. Not nearly as much. Mm. That that bring me Nakamura. That's the closest thing yeah, we got, yeah, yeah. and that wasn't even like this. Oh, but that was fantastic. It was good, but it wasn't like this. Yeah. Um. So he did what he had to do. And unfortunately, he was overcome by the beast. Mm-hmm. He ended up hitting a couple more Germans, and then eventually, he he locked in the Coquina clutch. It looked like Lesnar was going to be out. Did Joe hit him with a Uranagi in the ring, or no? He probably did early Is on. That, I thought he kicked out at two. Then maybe that was probably the, the only the only attempt. thing I have with that is that it put Reigns away clean. I'm not sure if that. Was in direct response, I like because that was a raw match a while yeah. ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I think that that was probably after something else too. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I guess it was just one of those things where it was like, I guess they're using that as the finisher. That is what they're using yeah. as his finisher. Should have hit the muscle buster. Well, that would have been probably funny to killed watch. the Roman. I mean, not Roman. It no. would have killed Lesnar. Yes. Lesnar, yeah. Um, because uh, Joe wouldn't be strong enough to lift up Lesnar, so he definitely would have snapped his neck. <laughs> it's so funny when. When uh, Lesnar was hitting those Germans, Joe was just like like he was jumping into a pool. Mm-hmm. And he He's, was just he just it was, it was perfect. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, Joe hits the Coquina clutch or in, mm. in, locks in the Coquina clutch. It looks like Lesnar's going to be out. He's purple. And then all of a sudden, Lesnar just stands up, hits Joe with an F five, and, and hits him it. with the. Uh, the it, hits him or pins they, him. They probably should have let it go a couple more minutes. Um. It would have been a little more suspenseful if he kicked out of the F5, but at the same time, if you want to protect the F5, you can't have people kicking out of it. Yeah. So. Well, and and this kind of brings me back to, I don't know what their plan with Lesnar is, but after the whole Goldberg fiasco, you kind of just, like, he's not Lesnar anymore. He lost to this guy Uh, quick. I, I feel like... The fans are okay with forgetting that that happened. Well, they forget who the champion is week to week. Well, yeah, that was yeah. That, that's one of the reasons that I wanted Joe to win because I just want, the, I just want him on TV. I honestly thought that this might have been a squash match. Yeah, with Joe getting him into the ring immediately, pinning him yeah. after that attack at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, they might actually do that. Yeah, and but obviously it ended no. up not working out that way. Or but. I, I would have been fine with a DQ. With Joe, you know, winning, winning by DQ. but well, not winning. He would lose, obviously, if if he attacked with a chair or something like well, that. Well, but why would Joe want to do that? If he couldn't, if well, he could, if, if I would have kicking out. Or I something would have like that. I would have preferred if Lesnar did that. Yeah, but that's not really Lesnar. There's no need for why not? Lesnar. Lesnar is backed into a corner. Yeah. Lesnar needs to. I guess so, do yeah. something. He knows that Samoa Joe's going to beat him. Yeah. So do something. Yeah, you know, that's have true. Have have Heyman throw him the chair. Yeah. You know they're both heels. Right. Lesnar's not a face in this scenario. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know. I like I said, this was good, but I don't think there was any winning in terms of the future no. booking in no, this kind of match. I don't know what the future holds with yeah, the universal no title. The only thing is for sure is that Reigns is most likely going to be wrestling Lesnar at SummerSlam. You think? Well, he announced it. Oh, did he? Yeah, on Raw two weeks ago. Remember? That was oh, his big yeah. announcement. But but he didn't win the match, so I kind of figured. Okay. I know, I, I There know. was no stated stipulation. I know. I know. And for all accounts and purposes, Braun might be off the TV until yeah, SummerSlam. Yeah, I guess that's true. There's a very good chance. Was we he going to come back and cost yes. more of them the title? Probably. Yeah. 
Why not? I guess so. Or they'll and end the feud. Reigns' recent pay-per-view streak has not been good. In terms of victories? Yes. No. He uh, hasn't won since Mania. Yeah. Because... Yep. Oh, wait, no. Did he lose? He lost the payback, right? He won at Fastlane and lost the payback? I think so. And then... Um, yeah, he lost to... Yeah, Strowman. Yeah, those were the two matches he and had then, on pay-per-view yeah, against Strowman. Yeah, Extreme Rules, he lost the Fatal the, Five yes. Way. Which isn't really a... No. It is a loss, it's but still it's not a loss. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, I was thinking back, speaking of Mania, that the Hardys and Cesaro and Sheamus have pretty much been feuding since yes. basically Mania. Three months. Yeah. So, Which is crazy because feuds used to last forever. Yeah, but now a three-month feud seems like a long time. Yeah. Well, you get so much wrestling. That is true because back back in the day, back in the 90s, when Raw was the only show, so you're literally getting one. Right. And back even further when they were taping them, what, a couple at a time, yeah. I think? I guess so. I, think, I, I thought know. they taped two Raws at a time. That's why it felt weird when they would have – like a week in between. Yeah. You know, at some point they did it's that. It's possible. I don't really remember. Um. So, anyway, yeah. those it was a good main event. Yeah. Better, better than I thought at first when I first heard that it was going to be Joe against Lesnar. Right. I know my opinion on this is not the same as everybody else's for the most part. Yeah. Um. And you're entitled to that. It's true. It's called an opinion for a reason. Yes. <sighs> and on that note, this has been our Great Balls of Fire review. Yes, sir. If uh, you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.